The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sam Taramina, blogger on the OA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host of Queen Tamaris on Orient Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to talk about this week, of course. Everybody's back from spring break. Um, of course, you know, not a lot of, not a lot took place. Of course, a lot of previews coming up for spring sports. Um, Obviously, we got a lot to talk about um, there. Um, of course, we got so- a lot of soccer to talk about. We got some track and field to talk about. Um, we just found out I wrote a column. But I also want to talk about the um, some basketball news. I mean, obviously, the big one here is basketball. Obviously, you look at the um, the OA and the Lakes Valley Challenge. Um, you know, the OA and the um, KLA are going to take each other on in the Lakes Valley Challenge. We're going to break that down early insight there. Um, we're going to talk that as well. Um, let's, actually, let's break that down. Actually, let's break that down. The um, the um, OA Lakes Valley Challenge, the matchups, of course, some for basketball, for both girls and boys basketball. Um, you know, I wrote a column on this and a lot of early thoughts about this. And there's some interesting matchups. I mean, obviously... You look at we're gonna go girls first here. Um, the matchup you got West, we got West Movement taking on Plymouth Salem at the rematch of the um, Division One State Finals that took place this year. Um, Plymouth Salem, the Rocks, they got a lot coming back. I mean, Madison Morgan's back, um, going up against West Bloomington with their four proven starters back in um, Kendall Hendricks, um, the Davis Twins, and um, Destiny Washington. Um, That'll be a very interesting matchup when West Bloomfield and um Plymouth Salem get to play. I mean, that's going to be really interesting how that's going to match up. Another match to keep an eye on, you got Dearborn Fortson taking on Rochester. Um, The battle in the paint between the um, Ajami sisters, along with going up against Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. Um, Dearborn Fortson also has got um C- Selena Bassey and M- Mylon Berry. Um, Rochester, we know this team really, you know, when you look at the Falcons, they, they don't have the, I mean, like the guards are going to be a big question mark for them this offseason. Um, is a player like Lucy Cook ready to step up? That's the big question over there at Rochester. Of course, Dearborn Fortson is going to be very experienced next year. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting matchup over at Rochester when those two teams play. Um, another matchup I think could be interesting you got is, um, is you got Brighton at Stony Creek. This is an interesting match considering, you know, both teams had um good years this year, but very disappointing results in the um postseason. Of course, both teams lost in the um district semifinals. Of course, Brighton lost to Heartland. Um and then um and then um Stony Creek, of course, losing to Rochester. Um both teams, I mean, like Brighton's got some players back. I mean, Mac- Mackenzie Jabrini. Um, Sarah Audi, Sophia Moore, Megan Keller, Isabel Brock, Genevieve Cox, and Noel Ebel coming back. I mean, Stony Creek, we know what they got back. I mean, Merrick Strawback, um, Sarah LaPrairie, Aaron Flynn, Izzy Avage. Um, not to mention, there, there's a couple others coming back for Coach Kellen James. I mean, like, so that's going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least, right there. Um, and I think it'll be a good matchup, to say the least. I mean, it's going to be, I think it'll be, it's going to be interesting when those two teams play. I mean, both teams have a lot to prove. Both teams have a lot to play for. I mean, both teams are solid teams. I mean, they are really, really good, solid teams. And that'll be a good matchup there, to say the least. Um, Plymouth at Lake Orion's another one. I mean, when you look at this matchup here, um, program strength versus program strength. It's a program strength game. I mean, both teams have had really good varsity programs you know Plymouth really struggled this year um Lake Orion we know they lose nine seniors um they got a ton of proven depth back they started at least six freshmen um so that's going to be really interesting to see how that matchup is going to go between the Dragons and the Wildcats um Lake Orion we know program strength has been a big factor for this team um you got 
You got um, Izzy Walensky coming back, Charlotte Poblowski, Ryan Palajak all coming back for Lake Orion. Yes, they're going to be a young team, but you know what Coach Bob Bridges teams, I mean, like, you know, they've always found ways to, um, they've always managed and found ways to be very successful. And I don't think this team's going to be no different next year. Um, will they be as good as they were this year? Probably not, but, but you know, it's Lake Orion. It's, it's Lake Orion. I mean, like when you look at the Dragons, um, you know, coach Bob Bridges very well. He's, he is one of the best coaches, I think, in the state of Michigan um, with what he's got. Um, you know, and I really think that um, when you look at the Dragons next year, I mean, like, I think, you know, they, they, um, yeah, they're going to be down next year a little bit, but I think they're going to be, they're going to surprise some people, I think. So we'll see how that one, how that matchup goes. It'd be a good match between Lake Orion and Plymouth um, over at Lake Orion um, in that one. Um, Wayne Memorial taking on Troy Athens. This is a battle of styles. Um, the Zebras, up and down team, well proven team. Troy Athens like to slow it up and down. Um, they got Alex Link, Abby Malone, Casey Mercer, Ava Lauer, Katie Keller come back for Grocery Clump. Um, Way Memorial, we know what they got. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how what happens in that matchup. It's going to be really interesting to see how that one goes in that one there. Um, Heartland taking on Farmington. Um, bad match for Farmington. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Heartland's a very good team. I mean, it's going to be difficult for them. I mean, you know, I asked myself, how in the how in the world did did Farmington get placed with Heartland? I mean, last year Farmington, there's a reason why they're good in the blue every year, is because with Farmington, um, they they just don't test themselves, and you finally get a test with Heartland. I mean. You know, Heartland's a well coached team. I mean, like they're a good team. I mean, they had a they had a nice year this year. Unfortunately, it was a very disappointing year for them on the Howell in the district final. But you know, when you look at it, but for Farmington, if your coach if your coach is Laura Guzman, you're gonna like this matchup, considering it's gonna give you a battle it's gonna give you a test. You have a young team, um, and you're playing one of the top proven teams in the state of Michigan. So that's going to be a gut check, I think, for Farmington when they take on Heartland. Um, so that'll be really interesting about Farmington between those two teams. Um, and then we got Livonia Stevenson at Royal Oak. Um, you know, this should be an interesting match for two teams to do different styles. Livonia Stevenson, a lot of experience come back. Royal Oak's got a lot of experience come back. Um, Royal Oak runs a defense first system. Um, it should be interesting. It should be a really interesting match to say the least over at Royal Oak. I mean, we're going to see how that goes. We're going to really see how that goes. Um, Northville at Adams. This one looks bad on paper, but it doesn't for several reasons. Northville, yeah, they, they won a district title. Um, they replaced seven seniors. Adams was a very young team last year. I mean, you got they got Samantha Blaine, Morgan McPherson, Layla Tomzak, and Faith Zolas coming back. Um, why I think this is, I mean, like, this is not as a doom and gloom for Adams as people think it is. It's because, you know, you look at Rod, you look at um, Northville. Northville doesn't have a coach yet. They don't. I mean, their coach stepped down recently. I mean, and then you look at Northville. Um, Northville, you know, you know, you'll get Adams. Adams, we know what they got. So I'm very curious to see what happens. Really curious to see what happens with this team. Um, and I think it'll be a good matchup. I mean, it'll be, a, I, think it, I think it's got a good opportunity to be a sneaky good game. It has got a great opportunity to be that. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, then we got... Dearborn at Avondale. Um, this is a tough matchup, to say the least, for um for um Avondale. Dearborn won 13 games last season. Um, you know, it'll be a big game for Avondale there. It'll be a program game for them. See where they're at against a good Dearborn team. Um, so we'll see how that one goes there. Um Plymouth Kenton at Bloomfield Hills. This might be the most underrated matchup in 
the entire um in the entire um KLA OA challenge. And the reason why I say this is because I think Kent's I mean like Kent's been solid every year. I mean they've been solid, really good every year. But Bluebeal Hills, you know, let's not forget this team they've been two years ago this team was at rock bottom. This year they made a lot of noise. You know, they won the blue. Um, first league title in school history. Had that tough, tough loss to Groves um, in the first round. Um, and went the game went to overtime. Um, I like Gro Blue Bay Hills a lot. I really like where this team's at. I mean, they got Brianna Young, Michelle Bar Barnett, Barrett, Ashley Forner, and Ruby Smith. I mean, there's a program over there at Bloopy Hills. They have built program strength back there. I mean, Kristen Massey's done a really nice job with that program over there. So when you really look at this matchup, I mean, I'm telling you, I think this would be a good matchup. I mean, Kenton, we know, has been proven. Proven, good team, good program. It'll be very interesting how this goes between the Chiefs and the Blackhawks. It'll be very interesting. Um... And then you have Lavonia Franklin taking on Seaholm. This will be an interesting matchup. Um, Patriots won seven games last season. They should be better this year. They should be. Um, Seaholm's got some experience back. Every, obviously, Addie Flynn back's a big deal for this team. Um, and I think it'll be for Coach Chris Manchester. Um, curious, you know, they also got um, Mary Gumbus, Claire Guffey, Addie Chris. Kitsman, Emma Weber, Taylor Harling, and Mary Wiggins coming back. This game should be very competitive. If this game's not, something's wrong. I mean, I know how good both teams are. I mean, I know how good both teams are. And I think it's going to be a very interesting game. So we'll see how that one goes. Then you have Labonia Churchill at Groves. And this one is going to be interesting because... Groves lost a lot of proven experience last year. You lose a girl and, you know, they they lost Caitlin Sanders last year. They lose Caitlin Sanders' graduation. That's going to be a tough loss. Um, Who's going to step up? I mean, yes, you got Sierra Rocco. You got Nava Corgram Cor McKay coming back and Cameron Little for Coach um, Allison Heidi. But I'm curious to see how J.C. Roy makes her the next step. Because J.C. Roy is a really interesting player. She was a five-quarter girl last year. Um, I thought, you know, and then she shows some greatness up on varsity, you know, in a backup point guard. I mean, I'm curious to see how Groves' guard situation is going to look. I think J.C. Roy is a really good player. I think, she, I think she's an underrated player. I mean... I think she, she ha she's more than capable. I mean, and it's a good matchup for girls going against the Boney Churchill. It really is. It's, it's, a, it's a great match for them going up against the Chargers. I mean, they struggled last year. Should be better. Should be better. This, should be better coming up. They should be better. Um, then you have Westland John Glenn at Pontiac. Um, both teams didn't win a game last year. Um, Pontiac has eight sophomores now. They were eight freshmen this year. They're going to be sophomores next year. Um, Westland John Glenn, I don't know much about about them. Um, I know, I know the Rockets are a good team. I mean, like, they, I mean, they've been they've been good program, but they've had their struggles as well. So this will be a really interesting matchup between um, the Rockets and the Phoenix, and I, it'll be at Cy Green Gym. Which that'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Um, considering I've heard that they had their gym redone and everything over there at Pontiac. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. We will see. Um, and then we got Novi at Troy. These are two teams that really struggled last struggled. I mean, Novi had a run to the regional final where they they shocked Plymouth. They shocked Northville. I mean, it was hard to believe with them. I mean, 
Both teams are rebuilding a little bit. Yes, Novi's got Jordan Popic and Ava Lin and Anna Lindsay. Troy counters with Diamond Prince, Regan Zider, and um and Olivia Spangler. I think the key player in this match was Carly Higginbottom. And you before Higginbottom got hurt, Troy she's she is an inside out three point shooter. She can play in the post. She's a talented player. Um, you put her with Prince. You put her with with Zyder. Zyder's a three point shooter. Spangler's a three point shooter. Diamond Prince is your typical. Um, Diamond Prince can play. Uh, I mean, her game reminds me a little bit of David Gomez's game a little bit. Um, but when you look at or maybe an Aaron Howell type player um, with Diamond Prince. I mean, but when you look at Troy, they should be better next year. They should be. I mean, if there's not, then something's wrong. I mean, when you look at the program Troy's got coming back, next year's class is looking really good. And then when Macy Zider comes in two years, you know, then I will be very curious to see how Troy goes from here. I mean, I've heard a lot about her. She's that good. But when you look at this year's game between Troy and Novi, um, bottom line is, I mean, I will be very curious to see how Novi plays this uh, with Carly Higginbottom. I mean, like, do they match up with her? I don't know. It'll be very interesting. But we'll see how this goes. I'm I'm very curious to see how this goes. Um, next we have Belleville at Oxford. Oh, this will be interesting. I mean, I know Coach Jason Wilkins what he's done over there very at um Belleville. He's done a great job with that program. They got a lot of experience coming back. I mean, bottom line is you look at Belleville. You know, obviously they had that disappointing loss in the district final at home to Celine last year. So they're going to be looking to be motivated this year. Um, if you're Oxford, this is a perfect game for you. Here's why I would say this. Because your losses last year were to North Farmington and Lake Orion. Both teams very good senior heavy teams. You look at Oxford last year with a young team. You lose one senior, Miranda and Emco. You return four starters. Nevaeh Wood, I'm curious to see how her ACL injury is going. Her recovery is going. I mean, but you have a player like Brady Elling. You have Lexi Yankee. And then, uh, and then you have, of course, you have Peyton Richter, Sophia Robb, Nevaeh Wood, and Allison Hofstad. You look at that team, and this game has got so many different elements in here. You know, if you're Oxford, this is perfect. Because if you're in a district with Grand Blank for, again, for a fourth straight year, and you're playing a team in Belleville, you know Belleville is a better team than Grand Blank is. And I'm not knocking Grand Blank at all. But Belleville's a much better team than Grand Blank. And... The fact that you've lost the Grand Blank the last three years, you know, yes, it's tough, but, you know, if you have them in the district for a fourth straight year, this is your perfect test. This is your perfect test. I mean, there's others along the way that'll give you some, that'll be interesting as well. Lake Orion will be a very interesting game for Oxford, always is. But when you play Belleville, you know, you're going to know where you're at. And I and that's the measuring stick for Oxford. It's going to be that Belleville game. Because that's where, you know, Oxford's got to get their depths figured out. They got to get everything figured out. Because you know Belleville's a deep team. They like the score in the, in the high 70s, high 80s. They will do that. It'll be very interesting, interesting to see how that matchup goes. It'll be very interesting. And the last match for the girls' side of the OA Lakes Valley Challenge is um, Clarkston taking on Howell. Wow. I mean, you look at star players in this matchup between you got Gabby Peichel and um, 
Eliana Roback. I mean, this is both sophomores had great postseason runs last year as freshmen. Roback, of course, getting the district final. Paito getting the regional semifinal. Um, for Howell, that was their first win over Heartland in five years. That says a lot. And you have a star player. And what Gabby Pico did against Lake Orion was really impressive. I mean, 16 points against a really good team. 16 points. And then on the other side, you know, Eliana Roback, we know what type of player she's more than capable of. The game's going to come down to role players. Whoever's role player shows up in this game will win this game at Clarkson. You know, and, and if you're in Howell's, in, it wouldn't surprise me if these two teams were to meet in the postseason. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, both teams have experience. I mean, Clarkson, we know how good their JV program was. Howell's been very solid, been very solid as a program all year long. So it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. But the star matchup between Pikel and Roback, you know, that's going to be the most, probably interesting. I will be very curious to see where Dan Leach goes. I will be very curious in that crew at 93.5 WHNI where they go. Because, you know, they got some great choices here. They do. Not only in the girls, but also in the boys as well. We're going to break the boys down shortly. Here. But that's my take on the girls. I mean, some really interesting matchups to say the least there. Um, let's look at the boys now. Um, obviously, there's some inter. I mean, of course, the girls' games are played at OA schools. The boys' games are going to be played at um at KLA schools. So, when you look at the first game, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk Pontiac at Wayne Memorial. This would be an interesting matchup between the um Phoenix and the Zebras. Um, uh, Pontiac has really struggled this year. I mean, I I don't know how they're going to be. This upcoming season, a ton of questions go with Damon O'Neill. This is a terrible match for Pontiac going against um against Wayne Memorial. He's got almost everybody back. Um, it's gonna be a tough sell. I mean, obviously, say at least it's gonna be a really, really tough sell to say at least for Pontiac in this match against Wayne Memorial. Um, it we're gonna see how this goes, but it just doesn't look very good for Pontiac in this matchup. Um, Royal Oak at Livonia Stevenson. Um, this should be an interesting matchup. Two teams with different styles. Royal Oak, we know, loves to shoot the three ball. Livonia Stevenson, of course, um, you know, they got some experience coming back as well. I mean, I mean, they got, they got some proven experience as well. So whoever style in this game will win this game, obviously, between those two teams. Um, Avondale against, um, Dearborn. I mean... If you're Avondale, how do I explain this? How do you explain this matchup? Because this is a this is a bad matchup for you. This is not a good matchup. Yes, you got you got um Justin Sykes and Decorious Warren coming back. But Dearborn won 19 games last year. They won 19 games. They have the bulk of their production coming back. You have Tayshawn Crosby, Adam Haraji, Muhammad Massauer, Ali Makai, Maladai Albury, and Asan Makai coming back. That's that's rough. That's going to be rough. And the fact they got to go down to Dearborn, that's going to be tougher for Avondale. And we don't know the situation of the program over there at Avondale. And there's a lot of questions when you look at Avondale. You know, I'm curious to see who. You know, is Aaron Fox going to be the guy? You know, that's the big question. You know, that's the big question I have with Avondale. How's program strength over there at Avondale? I mean, there's there's a ton of questions when you look at Avondale. I mean, there's a lot of questions. So we're going to see how this goes. We're going to see how this goes really in that matchup. Southfield Arts and Tech and Belleville. I don't understand why Coach Terrence Porter loves playing tough games. I really don't. Um, they're going to have a young team next year. Belleville's a solid program. They're a good program. Um, 
this is going to be a very difficult match, to say the least, for um, Southfield going against Belleville. I mean, like, you know, I mean, Southfield's played some crazy games this year. They played some real crazy games, but when you're playing against a team like Belleville, that's going to be very difficult. And the fact you got to go down there, that's going to be difficult. And we'll see. We'll see what happens there in that matchup. Farmington at Livonia Franklin. Um, Livonia Franklin's got a lot of experience coming back. So does Farmington, for that matter. Um, Greg Gray's, you know, you got J Justin Turner. Um, they got others as well. I mean, I'm curious to see how this matchup is going to be between Farmington and Livonia Franklin. Patriots and the Falcons. Um, there is a, it, it's a neighbor, it's a close rivalry. Of course, both teams not far from each other. Both schools are not far from one another. So this will be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, over there in Livonia with Farmington traveling down there. Um, won't be a, I mean, it's not a long trip for them. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, Lake Orion at Plymouth. Um, when I look at this matchup here, it's a battle of two good friends going against one, one another and I'm, Andrew Manusin and um Jose and Jose Andrades. Um Plymouth has got three very good players in um Idridge Cotton, Zach Jones, and Ross Kraft. Um of course, um of course Cotton's the one that I would be really the one that pays attention to if you're Lake Orion. Um Lake Orion last year lost a lot of experience. Of course, you lose a player like DJ Morrow, Blake Lydell, and Nate Havrilla. Um Lake Orion is going to be a very young team next year. I mean, yeah, you got Quiet Fly, you got Ethan Sharkey, Ryan Washington, Gage Scott coming back. Um, but the Dragons, you know, when you look at Lake Orion, um, you know, on pa and on paper, when you look at the Dragons, they could struggle. I mean, like, and it, and I've been hearing a lot from behind the scenes that Lake Orion could struggle next year. I mean. You know, I'm curious to see how this team does. I mean, I mean, like in Plymouth, they're a solid program. They're a good program. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes between the Dragons and the Wildcats. Um, with the girls playing at Lake Orion and the boys playing at them, playing at um, Plymouth. It's very similar match between Troy and Novi. We're going to talk Troy and Novi in a little bit. Um, that the girls got to play at home. And the boys are on the road. So we'll see how that one goes there. Um, Oxford at Plymouth Salem. Um, Oxford, what helps Oxford in this matchup is that they've got experience heading into Wayne County. They went into Wayne County and Livonia Clarenceville won there. Um, they have two proven, they have a couple proven players and Jake Champagne, Luke Stofan, Dominic Cassis, along with the Katie brothers. I mean, Plymouth Salem was senior heavy last year. Um, they still have Ryan Peters and Eric Milk coming back along with them. Um, Tommy Varech, Mitchell Robillard, Adam Sully, Carmen Chisma, and Landon Locke all coming back as well. Um, it's a very interesting matchup between two teams that have different styles. Um, I know Coach Steve Bladelaw very well. Normally, he will, normally, he will come up for a plan in this game. I have confidence in Coach Steve Bladelaw on that team. Really do. Um... Let's look at, of course, got Rochester at Dearborn Fortson. Um, of course, the girls are also playing um, Dearborn Fortson as well as another, another matchup here. Um, well, the boys playing at on the road and the girls are playing at home. Um, Rochester, they lost a ton of proven scores. When you lose players like um, Ela Collage, you lose Grant Calgano, um, Kamani Potts, that's going to be a hard threesome to replace if you're Nick Ebola. Um, but what helps you have Max Mole, Logan Pleasant, and Jake Tandy. Um, Max Mole made a lot of headwaves this year um, with his um, three-point shooting um, his freshman year. Um, they also have um, Jake Tandy. Jake Tandy's another good, solid player for, for Rochester. I mean, I think he he has the makings of being really good ne next year. Um, Logan Pleasant, of course, the five-quarter guy. Um, we know the family history with the Pleasants over at Rochester. Um, so when I look at this matchup here, um, Dearborn Fortson, we know they got some experience with Muhammad Habad, Mustafa Alamani, Ali Guba, Yusuf Salah, Mahi Dab, 
and Hassan Al Booty back. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how this matchup goes. I mean, Daryl Fortson, they're not a bad team. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how this matchup goes between the Falcons and the Tractors um, over in Dearborn, um, considering, you know, for Rochester, it's making that long trip in the Wayne County, um, which is going to be really, really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, Berkeley at Heartland. Um, this is interesting because it's a clash of different styles. Heartland, of course, was the team that upset Holly last year. They were a senior heavy. They were a young team last year, but they did upset Holly. Um, in the district semifinals, we're following to um, Betton in the district final. Um, Heartland's got a really good player in um Brady Quinn coming back. I mean, not the Brady Quinn who played at Notre Dame, but it's a different Brady Quinn. Um, Berkeley's got Donovan Powell and Michael Owango coming back. They did lose a lot of talent from a year ago. I mean, when you lose a player like Timmy Rukovic, you know, that's going to really hurt um, when you lose his production. Um, interesting matchup for Coach Joe Thermal having to travel out to Livingston County. Um, Hart and Heartland's gym, you know, it's pretty similar to, it's pretty similar to that of Oxford's. Um, so Berkeley should have a little bit of experience because they played at Oxford. Um, and their gym is eerily similar to that of, um, of, um, Heartland. So that'll be something to really watch for in that matchup. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. Seaholm takes on Livonia Churchill. Perfect match for Seaholm. Livonia Churchill was really bad last year. I mean, they were just, they had their struggles. They really had, they were up and down a year ago. I mean, there, it, th th this is an interesting match to say the least. I mean, Livonia Stevens, I mean, Livonia Churchill has re had really struggled. Of course, Seaholm's coming off that emotional win in the district, in the first round against Groves. Um, they have Finley Sparty coming back for coach, um, Mike DeGeeter, coach Mike DeGeeter. Um, so I'm curious to see how this one goes between the Maples and the, um, and the, um, Chargers. I mean, but I think it's a good match for Seaholm. Um, see how that one goes there. West Bloomfield at Westland John Glenn. Um, I mean, Westland John Glenn was very young last season. Won seven games. It should be better this year. West Blue Bay had a complete renaissance, um, winning 12, I mean, winning 14 games, 12, 12 win turnaround. Um, they returned several key players for Charnett Jordan and um, Donnie Watts, Chris Britton, Corey Pittman, Caleb Cobb, and Donnie Edwards. JV program was solid. Um, you know, program strength, you know, looks really good for West Bluefield. Um, really curious to see how this matchup is going to go. Um, in Westland, um, West Bloomfield, of course, they've played in Wayne County before. Um, so I'm curious to see how this matchup is going to be between the Lakers and the, um, and the, um, Zebras, um, uh, Westland John Glenn. So we'll see how that one goes in that one. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. We got, um, we got Troy Athens taking on Howell. Um, this one's an interesting matchup. Um, when you look at the Red Hawks, lost a lot of talent. They do return Emmanuel Robinson. They do have um, Hayden Crum, Luke Dio Giovanni, and Elvie Garvin coming back to James Scott. Um, Adams, I mean, Howell's got some experience as well. Jaden Hicks, Andrew Weber. Um, curious to see how this matchup's going to be considering it's at Howell. Um, Athens, usually, they don't travel as well as people think they do. Um, but it'll be a very interesting matchup between Troy Athens and Howell. You know, it's a clash of different styles. I mean, Troy Athens likes to slow it down, play defense first basketball. Hart, Howell likes to go up and down. They'll score in bunches. Um, it'll be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, between the Red Ox and the Highlanders. I mean, like, it'll be a really interesting one, to say the least, there in that one. Um, Groves goes to Plymouth Canton to take on the, um, take, it'll be a match between the Chiefs and the Falcons. Um, I've been to Plymouth Canton's gym, and I saw Plymouth Canton as a, as a team last year. They look good. They were very good. I still can't believe how this team was upset by Northville last year. 
I mean, Northville made an improbable run where they upset Plymouth Canton and Novi Detroit Catholic Central, um, winning a district crown. Um, but the Cantons, Canton, I thought would have been the team that, you know, would have got out of that district because of their because of their strength inside their interior game. I was shocked how Northville beat them in the district. I was shocked. Just completely shocked. So, and now you're taking on a Groves team. Groves is coming off a very disappointing postseason. I mean, la- I mean, this year they made a ton of noise. They won. I mean, they, they were in the race for the rest of the year. I mean, they shared the white crown with West Bloomfield, but they ended up getting upset in the first round by Seaholm. I mean, I mean, still, you look at a team that, you know, you look at, yeah, they're going to be experienced and all that. They don't have a lot of postseason experience. I mean, yes, you do have players like um, John Simpson, Josh, oh, John Simpson, Josh Gibson, Elijah Yelder, Brody Tushman, and then likely having, um, I mean, like um, McKinney, and then you have um, Paul Hubbard, um, likely going to be up for Groves, for Coach Mark West. The question is going to be for Groves is going to be is can they find that magic? Of course, what Groves did under Coach Mark West, they brought that program back. I mean, that team, you wonder where they were at, you know, when Benny White was there. You, you wonder where they were at. But, you know, what Coach Mark West has done is he's done a really good job taking a very young team, getting to the prominence, but he's got to take the next step. You know, I'm not knocking on Benny White. He did, he did a really good job of that team over at Groves. But, you know, you got to give Coach Mark West credit for what he's done over there. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes between um, Groves and Plymouth Canton. Um, like I mentioned earlier, two disappointing postseason teams um, looking to get back in the thick of it, you know, when they play each other in the Lakes Valley OA Challenge. Adams at Northville. You know, when you look at this matchup right here, I mean, Northville, as I mentioned, upset wins over Novi Detroit Catholic Central and Plymouth Catton. Um, they lost a lot of, they lost a lot of talent. Um, they, they have Carlos Adamson, Justin Huang, and Caleb Williams coming back. So there is some talent over there at Northville. There is still some talent over there. Adams is going to be very interesting next year. They won their first regional crown in school history. They have Peter Kirkassis, William D., um, Trenton Lagarde, Gavin Ferris, Luke Marcio, Jake Anderson, Jake Anderson. And Aaron Tro- Aaron Troswell and um all coming back. There's one name I didn't mention. Brady Prescorn. People are gonna say, well, why did you mention Brady Prescorn? Because there's a question with him, and I didn't say about Lake Orion with Caden DeGreffen Reed, um, because there's a lot of division one schools that are looking at DeGreffen Reed, but also there's a lot of schools that are looking at Brady Prescorn. And there is a possibility that he might graduate early. Same thing with the Graffinery. Same thing with Brady with, with Brady Cozen and Clarkson. They could graduate early. I mean, you know, and that would be very unfortunate if all three of them didn't play basketball next year. But that's a possibility. You know, when you look at all three of those guys being looked for by um football, by football, by proven football teams. I mean, like, you know, when you look at Division One schools, you know, they expect you to be there early. They expect you to enroll early, you know, to get to play to um but some of them do some don't so very curious how that decision is going to go but still you really look at you know that possibility for adams if they lose brady prescore you know that's a much different team with adams if they don't have brady prescore i mean you could say the same thing with lake orion without caden to graffinry i mean that's a much different team um but it would hurt big time adams if prescore left early, graduated early, and went on to play college football. So, but that's the, that's the dilemma that Adams is in when you look at that matchup. And you're playing a Northville team that's really good, really proven, 
So we're going to see what happens there in that match. We're going to really see how that one goes. Um, and then, of course, you have Clarkson at Brighton. Um, Clarkson, Brady Coast, Brody Coast, same thing. You know what I mean? Same problem. You know, but they have, but they still got Desmond Stevens, John Call, Matt Flagger also coming back. Um, Brighton was a senior heavy team last year. They got to place a ton of talent. I mean, and playing a team like Clarkston, you know, that's never going to be easy. You know, especially with the program strength they got. Their freshman class was very good. And I expect, I expect some of them to be up on varsity next year. Um, their JV was solid as well. I mean, like, you know, so when it comes to Clarkston program strength, really is the one you got to look at, you know, when you look at, um, when you look at, um, Clarkston, I mean, program strength. So it's a tough match for Brighton. No doubt. It, it's going to be a really tough match for Brighton. No doubt in that matchup. It'll be really tough. And then you have Troy taking on Novi. Um, you know, this is a game of interesting styles. Um, Troy, of course, well coached under coach Gary Frelick. Um, also, you know, they got Mason Parker, John White, Son, and Chase Kuyper coming back. They're JV. They got a nice blend of JV, uh, JV players. I mean, watch for Jane Peacock. I expect him to make, a, make some noise. You got Greg Tester on that team. Um, you got the younger Pinoza. Um, you got the, um, you got the younger, um, you know, there's several others on that team. Um, and then you got Novi. Novi is a team that really has, um, Novi is a team that really has the, um, you know, they lose six seniors, but they have TJ, TJ McGowan, Ronnie Hackman, and Isaac and Phil DeBoyd. Um, it'll be a really interesting matchup between the Colts and the Wildcats, um, to see how that one goes, um, over there at, at Novi, um, Novi, of course, big gym. It'll be a very interesting game to see how that one goes. But we'll see how that one goes between those two teams. So that's my take on the Lakes Valley OA Challenge during the winter. A lot of excitement to look at. Um, the matches were announced early. It's going to be a very interesting match, to say the least, between those two teams. Um, so we'll see how that one goes over there between... Um, you know, between the um, Lakes Valley and the OA. I'm not sure if there's going to be a trophy, though. I mean, between the two leagues. I mean, like like they did in the um, OA Lakes Valley Challenge. I mean, where, of course, in girls basketball, the OA was really dominant against the Lakes Valley um, teams. They were just dominant in that, in that challenge. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, we're going to see how that one goes. Um, districts came out for, um, districts came out for, um, baseball, softball, girls, soccer. We're going to break those down real quick. Um, obviously, you know, seasons are already underway. Um, Rochester, I, I feel like to me, in my opinion, I think Rochester, yeah, Boomba Hills is defending state champions in girls soccer, but watch for Rochester. I think the Falcons could make a ton of noise this year. Um, I just think that they can make a ton of noise. Um, they're going to, I mean, like, you know, obviously you got the girls basketball players on that team. Ava, I mean, you got Ava Williams there. You got Alice Mack at goal. Um, they, there's, I mean, Natalie Race is another solid player there. Um, so I think Rochester's a team I'm really high on that I think can make a serious run. Um, Stony Creek's another team. So is Rochester Adams. Um, Troy Athens is another one that I think can make some noise. So... We'll see. I mean, soccer's going to be very interesting this year to watch. It'll be really interesting. Um, Let's look at, of course, the districts. I mean, District 6 at Clarkson. You got Clarkson, Oxford, Lapeer, Davis, and Grand Blank, Flushing, and of Shorts Creek. This should be a three-team district. Um, I think whoever wins this, Flushing's wild card. Um, I think three teams got a great chance to win this district. Um, between the Wolves, Wildcats, and Bobcats. So we'll see how that one goes over at Clarkston. Uh, District 7 at Lakeland. You got West Bloomfield, North Farmington, Milford, Lakeland, Waterford, Mott, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Northern. Um, Waterford Kettering went to Division 2. We're going to talk that in a minute. Um, it'd be interesting at 
and, and White Lake. I mean, Lakeland's the early favorite, but Waterford, Mott, Wild Lake Northern, Wild Lake Central, this stand out. I mean, Milford's a sleeper. I mean, we'll see. I don't know if North Farmington, West Bloomy could could seriously contend in this district, so we'll see how that one goes. Um, district 8 at Novi, Farmington, Farmfield's Mercy, Livonia Stevenson, Northville, Novi, South Lion, South Lion East. Um, Northville should be the favorite. Can't count Livonia Stevenson or Northville or, or Novi. Um, both South Lion schools are going to be tough as well. Could Farmington be a player? Maybe. I mean, Farmington's Mercy can beat anybody, you know, so we'll see how that one goes you know, over there. District 12 at Gross Point South. We've got Harper Woods, Gross Point South, Dearborn, Dearborn Fortson, Detroit Cast Tech, Dearborn High, Crestwood, Detroit Western. I think this is a top district for Harper Woods. I mean, Gross Point South looks to be the favorite. Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Crestwood will be their top challengers. We'll see how that one goes. District 13, all OA district. Berkeley Grove, Seahome, Bloomby Hills, Royal Oak, South and Arson Tech, and Troy. I think it's going to come down to the four teams. I mean, you got Berkeley, Grove, Seaholm, and Bloomfield Hills. They could be a, they could be some serious players along with Troy. Um, Royal Oak could be a serious player. Southfield Arson Tech really just doesn't. They're going to have it tough in this district regardless. They're going to have it really tough. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, district 14 at Utica. This is the Kiss of Death district. You got the three Rochester schools. Rochester, Adams, Stony Creek, Romeo, Utica, Utica, Eisenhower, and Lake Orion. Um, Rochester's fair in this one. I mean, Adams will be solid. Stoney's solid. Lake Ori is a dark horse. Romeo looks solid. Utica's not bad. Utica Eisenhower's not bad. All these teams in here are solid. They're very good. I mean, Swinehart Field should have really good soccer in this district. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, when these when these seven schools get it on with one another. Uh, District 15 at Troy Athens. You got Troy Athens, Chippewa Valley, Frazier, um, Sterling Heights, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Utica Ford, Warren Cousineau, and Warren Mott. Um, Troy Athens is favoring this district. Um, should be interesting to see. I mean, Chippewa Valley and Frazier are sleepers. We'll see how that one goes. Um, District 24, this one's that to be announced. Um, Ferndale, Wall Lake Western, Livonia, Clarence, Detroit Renaissance, Birmingham, Marion, and Bluebells. Cranbrook Kingswood. This should be a district final between um Birmingham Marion and Bluebells Cranbrook Kingswood. Um, that's what it's looking like here on paper. I mean, Ferndale they could contend. We'll see, but you know it's going to be a tough call. I mean, you got two state powerhouse teams in that district. Um, on soccer, District Twenty Six at Goodridge. You got Abbeville, Pontiac, Goodridge, Holly, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Ortonville, Brandon, Waterford, Kettering. Um. This is an interesting issue. I mean, St. Mary's and Brandon stand out. Um, Goodrich is another team that stands out. They have their home, at home field. Abendale's a wild card. They're a sleeper. I can't trust water for Kettering in this district. Um, so my early thoughts, I got to give an edge to them. Um, Goodrich, home school, home, fo- home, home field matters. Um, so we'll see how that one goes in that one. That's my take on girls' um, soccer, their districts. Um, let's go to... Let's go to baseball. I mean, baseball, this would be very interesting, of course. Um, this will be over at, um, I mean, baseball. Let's take a look here. I mean, I mean, now my computer actually just went down. So, it would be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, you know, so when you look at softball, I mean, when you look at softball, um, I think it's interesting to see how this one goes. Um, so, when you look at, I mean, like, um, let me go on our site here. We'll stop here. Um, I think when you look at, um, I think when you look at softball, I mean, like this year's softball, obviously it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. I mean, you look at the teams that are going to be very good. Um, North Farmington, I'm high on a little bit this year, especially with the talent they got back. Um, obviously you have, um, obviously you have, um, I mean, like they. I mean, like and then you look at obviously with Clarkson. Clarkson's gonna. I think Clarkson's still gonna be the team to beat this year in softball because of who they got back. I think a lot of it is Kira Tomi. Um, here we go. Now I got the softball districts out. Um, District twenty at Farm Tills Mercy. We got North Farmington, Farmington, West Bloomington, Farm Tills Mercy. I think this is gonna come down to North Farmington and Farm Tills Mercy. I, I like North Farmington in this district. I, I think they're going to win this district. I mean, 
They lost to Farmsville's Mercy in girls basketball. I think they're going to get revenge on them this year. I really do. I see it happening. Um, District 22 at Royal Oak. You got four OA schools, Berkeley, Royal Oak, Groves, and A&T. Um, I think either Berkeley or Groves wins this. Royal Oak is a sleeper. Um, district 23 it, to be announced. Um, not a strong district. Ferndale Renaissance looked like there were two teams to beat. Um, I got to give the edge to Detroit Renaissance and move on here. But Ferndale can win this district, though. I think I should take it back. I got the Eagles win this district. Um, moving on here. All right, District 24, Harper at Gross Point North, Harper Woods, Gross Point North, Gross Point South, Detroit Cast, Detroit Western. Um, I got to give an edge to Gross, to battle Gross Points. Um, the Harper Woods could surprise some people. I mean, Detroit Cast, Detroit Western are solid teams, but I think at the end of the day here, I got to give the edge to Gross Point North. Host school, you know, we'll see how that one goes. District 25 at Avondale. You got Avondale, Booby Hill, Seahome, and Troy. Um, I like Bloopy Hills, the early favorite. Keep an eye on Seaholm, Troy, and Avondale. They'll have a very strong say. It's a wide open district. But I'm going to give the edge to Bloopy Hills right now in that district over there. Um, district 26 at Utica. You got Troy, Athens, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Utica, Ford, and Utica. I like Utica in that one. Home, home field matters. Um, it'll be a tough, tough cure for Troy, Athens. Uh, they, they should contend in that district. Um, so we'll see how that one goes there. District 29 at Oxford. You got Oxford, Lapeer, Davison, Port Huron, Port Huron, Northern. I think Oxford's got a great chance to win this district, but keep an eye on Davison and Lapeer. Davison, we know, has been a proven power in the state. Um, you know, for them, great opportunity for them with Grand Blank not in their district. Um, so we'll see how that one goes in that one. District 30 at Lake Orion. You got Lake Orion, Clarkson, Adams, Waterford, Kettering, Waterford, Mott. Adams shocked everyone last year when they won a district. Here's the thing. Lake Orion and Clarks are in this district. So I don't think they're going to be sneaking up on anybody this time around. Um, I mean, yes, Adams will be the favorite right now on paper, but I think Clarkson right now, obviously with the play of Kira Tomey, that'll be a big-time factor there. I think Tomey's a big-time player for them. Um, she should be in the candidate, and she should be a candidate for Miss Softball, in my opinion. That's how I view Kira Tomey um, this year at Clarkson. Um, District 31 at Romeo, you got Rochester, Stony Creek, Romeo, and Utica Eisenhower. Utica Eisenhower is the favorite to come out, but keeping on Rochester. Stony Creek's another tough team. Romeo, it's hard for me to trust them. Um, so we'll see how that one goes there. And then baseball districts came out. Um, District 16 at Livonia Stevenson, you got Farmington, North Farmington, Livonia Stevenson, North Novi, and Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, it's a wide open district. I think Laboni Stevens has got a great chance to win this district. I like what the Spartans have done. I mean, we'll see how that one goes. Um, district 20 at Gross Point South, Harper Woods, Gross Point South, Gross Point North, St. Clair Shores, Lakeview. Um, I got to give the edge to Gross Point North, um, but keep an eye on Gross Point South, St. Clair Shores, Lakeview. Harper Woods will have it tough in this district. Obviously, they won a district crown last year, but that was in, they were in Division Two. Now they're in Division One, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens to Harper Woods going forward there. Uh, District 22, this is at um, Royal Oak. You got Royal Oak, Berkeley, Sterling Heights, Warren Cousin, Warren Mott. Um, Berkeley's a team I'm really high on. I think they got a great chance. Royal Oak, I think this is, Royal Oak will have a really strong say. It's hard for me to trust the Macomb County schools in this district, so I think it's going to either come down to come down to between the Ravens and the Bears. In this district. So we'll see how that one goes there. District 23 is to be announced. Got Oak Park, Ferndale, UD Jesuit. Detroit Mumper, Detroit Renaissance. I think it's going to come down to Ferndale versus um, UD Jesuit. I think the Cubs will win this district pretty handily. Um, it's unfortunate for Ferndale. Especially with the way the season they've had. Um, you know, in the past. I mean, obviously, you know. We'll see how that one goes there. Uh, district 24 is that Birmingham Brother Rice. You got... Brother Ice, Grove, Seaholm, and A&T. Um, this is, looks like a three-teamer between Grove, Seaholm, and Brother Ice. I mean, I know you can't count out Southfield, Arson Tech. I mean, like, you know, they're going to have, like, everybody against them. I get it. But I think when you look at this matchup here, um, I think the Warriors, I think that, um, I think Birmingham Brother Rice should be the early favorite. Keep an eye on Groves. I think Groves could contend in this district. 
So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, like, I, I just think that Birmingham Brother Rice has got a great chance to move on in this district. So we'll see how this one goes. District 27 at Romeo. You got Rochester, Rochester Adams, Stony Creek, Romeo, and Utica Eisenhower. Adams should be a favorite in this district. Obviously, who they got back. Pico Brothers, um, big time players. Um, I think they're going to make a ton of noise. Utica Eisenhower should be right there with them. Um, Rochester's a sleeper. So is Stony Creek. Romeo, we don't know with them. I mean, they, I mean, like, it is at Romeo. But I just think Rochester Adams got a great chance to win this district and move on. Um, so we'll see how that one goes between the Highlanders and them. You know, I, I think Adams will win that district. Uh, district 28 at Avondale. You got Avondale, Troy, Troy, Athens, Blue Bee Hills, and Utica. Um, Utica's the early favorite, but keep an eye on all four OA schools. They should have, they should have strong says. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Utica gets upset. It really wouldn't. So we'll see how that one goes there. District 29 at West Bloomfield. They got West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, Kettering, Mott, and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I mean, the MHA did both Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Lake Orion to grave injustice here. Um, basically saying, okay, you two are proven powerhouses. You're likely to see each other in the district final. Um, and one is going to move on. And that's really unfortunate considering how good both teams have been. Um, as of late, of course, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, we know the pitching they have. Lake Orion, we know they're a good team. I mean, like, then you look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, you know, they're a solid team. West Bloomfield, we know they're a sleeper. They could give any, whoever the, um, the two seed in that district is going to be problems. They could give anybody problems in that district. So they're my sleeper there. Um, Lake Orion, um, Lake Orion and um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's look like they're the two top teams right now in that district. Um, and then last but not least, District 31, this is at Oxford. You got um, Oxford, Clarkson, Fenton, Holly, and Grand Blank. Grand Blank should be the favorite. Grand Blank, I mean, Clarkson's the early favorite, but keep an eye on Oxford and Grand Blank. Grand Blank, we know the proven powerhouse they are. Oxford, we're well coached. I mean, they were young last year. Um, I think they're going to be better this year, so we'll see how that one goes. I mean, Fenton's a sleeper. Holly could beat anybody. I mean, so we'll see what happens. I mean, you know, baseball, softball, um, soccer, all underway. You got track and field also starting to get underway as well. Um, lacrosse has been underway as well, so a lot of Good spring sports to talk about as we um, begin the spring sports season um, going forward. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second on Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Uh, also, keep an eye on, um, you know, on certain, on a lot of headlines. We're still keeping an eye on the um, football coaching vacancies over at Avondale and Pontiac. Um, once we hear from both, both schools, I mean, who their head coaches are, we will post it on the blog and we'll talk about it on the podcast um, coming up. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and I will see you next week. God bless all.